Hey everybody, it's Galmadex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be playing a quick emblem draft of the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. This is a special limited time draft format that's going to work exactly like a quick draft throughout the drafting and deck building process, but once we get into the gameplay, each player has a Tremiel the Inner Sun emblem, making it so at the beginning of their end step, they discover five so that means that at the end of each player's turn, they're going to be exiling cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card with mana value 5 or less, and they're going to cast it for free or put it into their hand every single turn. So this is a wildly powerful, extremely impactful emblem, and that definitely should impact the way you build your deck at least a little bit. You want to play less cards that are for very specific instances, like combat tricks that are only good during combat, counter spells that are only good in response to your opponent casting a spell, because those are the kind of cards you really don't want to discover into. And you also probably want to up your average mana value at least a bit, so that the average card that you're hitting off of the Chameel Emblem is a little bit higher mana value, a little more impactful than if you drafted like normally and had maybe a really aggressive curve of 1s and 2s, because then you might end up hitting a bunch of really low mana value cards off the Chameel and being a little sad there. So there's definitely some ways to build around this emblem. You don't want to go completely insane with it and play like a zero land deck and just try to discover into everything, because then you're just going to get overrun eventually by your opponent constantly playing two spells a turn because they get to cast a spell and discover a spell. But you also don't want to ignore the emblem and just draft a normal deck. So it'll be interesting to see where the balance is there. For the most part, it's just high variance, high chaos magic. But there's a little bit of strategy to it that could be kind of interesting. So we'll see. For the most part, again, spinning a roulette wheel every turn, seeing what pops out. It should be a fun format. There's also pretty high variance where the player on the play is very, very, very heavily advantaged in this mode because the first player to play is going to be the first player with an end step. They're going to be the first player to discover five as well. So there is that to keep in mind as well. But without further ado, let's get into the pack one pick one. To start it off, we have a Bringer of the Last Gift in the rare slot, which is a pretty fun card, but you do have to make it to 8 mana, which can be pretty difficult. With this emblem, we might be able to get into quite a few board stalls where each player has a ton of creatures on the board. Maybe that buys us the time to get to 8 mana, but we also have to consider that we might want to cut quite a few lands, since we know we're going to be casting a spell every turn, even if we don't hit lands on curve. And because we're ripping a non-land out of our deck with that emblem every turn, we know that we're going to end up with a really high ratio of lands to non-lands in the late game to help get to uh, whatever we have stuck in our hand by that point. So I don't know if bringing the last gift is going to be great here. Eight mana, just kind of a ton. It's not discoverable. I'm just going to take probably one of the stronger discoverable cards, which is going to be Grasping Shadows or a Dinotomaton, I think. Could also take a Tali's favor just because it's really funny <laughs> to get bonus discovers there. But I think I'll go for the Dinotomaton. I like that uh, enter the battlefield effect if we have it in our hand and we're playing it on curve aggressively. But it's also a really nice card to like discover turn one and just have a standalone menacing threat. For pick number two, there's nothing here that's super great to discover into. The seed stones would be fine, but we do really want to get to that seven mana to flip it. And it's bad to discover this turn one if we don't have a creature out yet. So seed stones a little awkward. Maybe Aquawali could be good. If we're a green-black descend deck, dis uh, discovering that is fine when we've got a lot of permanence in grave. Hoverstone Pilgrim, it is high mana value, so fine card to discover five but not super impressive or super exciting. It does fit into our deck no matter what, so that's kind of interesting. We could also take Promising Vein here, because since that emblem is casting things for free, we are probably going to splash some things in just because they're powerful high mana value cards, and having a little bit of actual fixing to help do that could be nice in case our splash cards get stuck on our hand. So I actually might just start with Promising Vein here. Again, really just kind of drafting around this emblem, seeing how it'll it'll all work out for us. Pick number three, we've got a Soul Coil Viper if we want to do reanimator stuff, which is pretty fun. Um, this would make it so if we do draft a bunch of like really high mana value creatures, like a bunch of five mana creatures, and play a low land count, 
to where we have them stuck in our hand. We could just discard the hand size and eventually reanimate them with Viper anyway. That could be kind of cute. Could take a walk with the Ancestors. That is a five mana spell or a Ray of Ruin for removal. Very inefficient when we draw it, but when, when we discover it, it is super good. I might actually go for Ray of Ruin here. Best card to discover, so we'll roll with it. Panicked Altasar looks like an absolute banger to discover. A 4-5 reach, so it stops all your opponent's flyers. And in board stalls, which I think this format is going to be full of, it gets to keep chipping away at your opponent for 2 damage a turn. I think Altasar looks actually incredible here. So we'll take that maybe towards some kind of black-red descend pile. We'll see. Uh, pick number five could move towards green red with this walk the ancestors. It's a high mana value card to discover into, and it does continue the discover loop, which is really funny. We discover into this, pick something up from our grave, and then just discover something smaller <laughs> of four mana value or less. So that's pretty cute. Visage is fine. Pretty good discovery early, but if we discover it late, it's going to be really bad would be the strongest card in the pack just for making a regular deck here. So do we go regular here or do we go green red all gigantic high mana value stuff? Let's get fancy with it. Let's go with walk the ancestors go all high mana value here. Pick number six nothing high mana value this time around unfortunately except the archaeologist which is actually a reasonable splash. Now normally this card is not very good but it is a great card to discover when you're discovering five because of that scry 3. That scry 3 sets up your next turn's discovery. Put something on top, usually a land, for you to draw into, and then right underneath that is whatever you're going to discover at your next end step. So if you find a good card to discover next turn's end step, you can set it up in the correct order to discover into it rather than drawing it naturally, so that's a pretty cute combo. I should go for the Oltec Archaeologists here. Pick seven, another Panicked Altasar. I think this is going to be absolutely incredible, so I'm going to take another one. Pick number eight. Speaking of things that are going to be absolutely incredible, five, four, that's really hard to block. Super good card to hit off that emblem. And we're going to play a good chunk of red just so that uh, if we don't discover it, if we have this stuff in our opening hand, eventually we'll have played enough lands to just start casting them. I'm going to take a Tali's favor because it's hilarious to me, but... It would also only work if I play mana value two or less cards, which I don't know that I'll do. So it's probably not correct. We're probably supposed to just take like Envoy here or something. But Tali's favor is really funny to me though, so I'm gonna take it. Pick number 10, Daring Discovery is funny because it continues the discover loop, but it's actually a pretty terrible card to discover into during your end step because then like, you're already past the declare blocker step. You've already attacked. This isn't actually shutting off any blockers. So all this is going to do if we discover it is make it so we're discovering a mana value four or less card instead of a mana value five uh, or less card. So I actually think that's a pretty bad one to hit here. So I'll just take the pilgrim, I guess. Make sure we don't mill out, which is a possibility because in this format, you're basically drawing two cards a turn. You draw one card during your draw step and in your end step, you at worst... Uh, draw a card off the discover at best you're casting that card which is still pulling it out of your deck and uh, and thinning your deck out a little bit take a walk with the ancestors number two here i think i think that one actually seems like a decent discovery late in the game unlike the uh the one that shuts off blockers all right we're not gonna play any of these take a buried treasure just in case we do all kinds of splashy stuff everywhere uh, I'm not going to play any of these. I really don't want to discover into any of those or these. And let's see what we get in pack number two. All right, pack two, pick one. We could put Veto in here just because we could discover a 4-4 four, four flyer. It's got some abilities if we sack permanence. That's not going to happen often, but it's a big 4-4 four, four flyer. If it ends up stuck in our hand, that's going to be pretty bad. That's going to be a really hard one to cast off of just like promising vein as our only fixing right now. Maybe play a Buried Treasure, but then we might discover Buried Treasure, which is terrible. So I really don't want to do that. We could take, like, Join the Dead here towards Red Black. 
and that's a perfectly fine card to discover at any point. Or we could take a Dynatomaton for just another big dino. I really don't like the idea of Vito getting stuck in the hand here, so I will go for... Let's go for another red card, because we're really deep into red here with another Dynatomaton. Pack two, pick two. All right, towards red-green, we find an Itzkinth. We do want to hold two mana up whenever we can in case we randomly discover this, but then I could just cast it if I discover it and I don't have two mana up. I could cast it uh, in the next turn, put it into my hand instead. Uh, that way, yeah, we randomly discover into Altasars and Ceratops a decent amount of time. Discover into this, draw it into our hand so we can cast it next turn and make one of those other dinos kill something. Seems like solid removal. Let's grab the Eatskeenth here towards red-green, and I think that's where we're probably... Gonna solidify ourselves here. Yep, Malamet Veterans to pick up this time. 5-4 Trample, and uh, if we have four more permanents on our grave, it puts a counter wherever you, we want it every time it attacks, which can be pretty awesome. Pick number four, Curator of Sun's Creation. We did it, everyone. We absolutely did it. Now, if we cast this or we discover into it, we get to discover five twice during our end step every turn. All right, Curator of Sun's Creation, join the party. You are going to be so incredible. And here's another Dinatomaton. Pick number six, we get a River Herald Guide. Yep, pretty glued to red-green here. There's nothing worth splashing just to discover into it. Didact Echo would be the closest since it is a high mana value card. Pick number seven, I really don't want to discover into a Staggering Size or a Hot Foot Gnome or a Seeker, so I'll just take the slightly bigger one. We'll take the Hot Foot Gnome there. Now, In the Presence of Ages might not be the worst in the world. It's kind of like card draw. Pick number nine, another Tolly's Favors. Funny, but I don't think we're going to run enough one drops and two drops that it's gonna happen i'll still take it anyway because it would be cute uh, malamet scythe or another in the presence of ages i don't know that either of these are making the cut at all really then unlucky drop because i'm not playing combat tricks like the ancestors aid not playing any of these not playing any of these or these all right pack number three Let's get some high mana value green and red spells. There we go. There's another Rampaging Ceratops. Definitely slap that into the deck and be pretty happy with it. I do want a little bit more removal. I only have a Ray of Ruin and an Eatskeenth, and Ray of Ruin is really just if I discover it. Right, we're just going to play a red-green deck with a Promising Vein and like one Swamp and one Plains. Just a super bold mana base because there's a 50-50 chance that I discover the Ray of Ruin instead of drawing it. There's a 50-50 chance that I discover the Archaeologists instead of drawing it. Because I draw one card a turn, I also discover one card a turn. So it makes the, uh, the splashes uh, much less risky than normal. Although if we could wheel some cards like Plundering Pirate, that would be super helpful. Or the Promising Vein. Just have two copies of that. I'm still going with Ceratops first. Card is beef. Okay, pack three, pick two. Seed Stones is real nice, but Plundering Pirate for random splashes actually seems pretty big to me. I'm going to take the Plundering Pirate. And it's not a horrible discovery. Pack three, pick three has basically nothing. Could take a Hidden Volcano over a Mountain. Mineshaft Spider, I guess. Is some beef. Yeah, some amount of beef. I'll take the spider. Pick number four. Cannot discover into the seismic monster sore, as it is six mana value. Kind of hard to get up to six generally, but I can always mountain cycle it. If I don't... I don't actually hate that here, even though we can't discover it. Pick five. I could take Burning Sun Cavalry so that I do have something to discover off of these Atali's favors. I think I'm just going to end up cutting those, though. And I am playing Ray of Ruin, so I kind of like Primordial Gnar. Pretty good hit off of Discover, a 5-2 that then discovers something else when it dies. As long as I have a couple three drops in the deck. 
take a primordial gnar here and maybe just splash black cut the white cut the archaeologists here that makes the splash a little bit easier grab a malamet veteran over a cavern stomper stomper is better in general um, but veterans somewhat close in size and is discoverable which is pretty big kind of a big deal we could also take sunbird standard actually for this little black splash Pick number seven, Sahili's Lattice is actually real good in a red-green dino's deck. Not a great discovery, but still, still castable for sure. It still actually does its job when you discover it. You still get that card draw. It's not like Daring Discovery or Cosmium Blast or something like that where it literally doesn't do anything if you discover it. So I'll still take this Sahili's Lattice. I will happily take another Malamet Veteran. Grab another Walk with the Ancestors. I don't think I want this many of these because I really don't want to discover those until I've already discovered the big creatures, which I do have seven of, so maybe it's fine to have three of these. Yeah, I'll take... I will take this over Malamet Brawler. Grab another Dynatomaton. Make a few cuts. Call it a deck, probably. Yep, here we go. So, we've got 46 cards in here right now. I could put another Hot Foot Gnome in, I guess. Kind of it for anything I'm interested in on the side. Want to keep this mana curve like this, where we got the huge chunk up at 5, so we're hitting high impact cards. I think I'm going to go Promising Vein, Double Swamp, Double or Triple Swamp, Cut of Plains here. Um, then what are the least impactful cards? So I think Hot Foot Gnomes are not... Um, they're already just not that great, but they're even worse when half the time we're discovering our creatures, so they're hitting at the board during our end step anyway, where giving them haste is completely irrelevant. So I just really don't think Hot Foot Gnome is good. I don't have enough spells in the deck for Tali's favor. Um... Two mana value spells, that is. Then in the presence of ages, look at the top four, reveal a creature and land, put them into our hand. I think I just want cards that affect the board state, really. And then we cut archaeologists so that we're on purely black here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Seven, eight, nine, 15. This is 16 lands. Which normally with this high of a mana curve, you would want more than 16 lands. But again, half the time these are just getting cast for free. And we do have a Mountain Cycler. And as long as we shuffle our library off of Promising Vein or Seismic Monster Sword or something, um, the Discover Emblem means that our deck every turn is going to get a higher and higher and higher land to non-land ratio because it's going to guarantee every time you discover you pull a non-land out of your deck but you're leaving all your lands in there so by the time we've discovered like four times our deck ends up being you know four more lands four less non-lands in terms of the ratio there which matters if you're shuffling your deck with something like Promising Vein and Monster Sword, but if you never shuffle your deck, technically you're just going to clump all your lands onto the bottom. So I actually don't know how reasonable it is to just purely go super low on lands or anything, but I'm going to go 16, uh, 16 lands here just to see what happens. I think that should be fine with an emblem popping off every turn. We play this weird chunky pile and see what kind of chaos happens today. Oh my god. It's the perfect hand. We've got the curator in the hand. I guess the perfect hand would be actually just discovering the curator. So that we have it out on turn one for future discovers. Aw, unlucky drop the veteran. Eh, put that on the bottom. I need a fourth land for curator. Dang. I was so excited here. I'm like, we're on the play. We discover a five drop. Let's go. Ooh, plundering pirate though. We are just going... Going wild with the roulette wheels. These spins are great for us. 
Let's see, there's Death Cap Marionette. Let's play the curator and discover twice and go from there. They mill the board wipe. They hit a ray of ruin. It's just all removal to discover over there. Well, it's a good thing they're tapped out. We'll get at least one double discover off of this curator. Here we go. We are definitely cashing in the treasure for that. That is super worth it. Discover the Altasaur. Discover our own Ray of Ruin on the Death Toucher, so the Altasaur can just attack naturally if we want it to. And we get to scry one, drawn to that Promising Vein, which is nice because that's our Black Source, to actually cast their Primordial Gnar in our hand. It also rips another land out of our deck, which is definitely good. All right, they discover a cave worm. Let's go menace on the curator, I think, and send in both. Because I think blue, black, anything that would kill the curator would be just straight removal anyway. Brackish blunder, put it back in her hand. That's rude. Okay. Uh, well, no attacks then, because Altasar actually just runs into the cave worm. So, now they're going to counter the Curator, probably. Walk with the Ancestors. Nothing in our grave. They've only exiled our cards, so that goes to hand. Awkward. Not a fantastic turn for us, that's for sure. All right, they're going to discover. They hit a Mycoid. 4-3 gives them a little fungus that can't block every turn they've descended. Doesn't do a whole ton here. There are very few counterspells in this format, and honestly, when everyone has a Chameel emblem, they really shouldn't be playing counterspells. Because if you discover into a counterspell, that's very bad. But they did hold all their mana up, and black has a lot of instant speed removal that can just kill our curator. I've got double walk with the ancestors, though, so, I mean, we just go for it. We cast it. They play some instant speed removal on it. I walk with the ancestors the next two turns. It was just so big. Oh, they're just going to keep bouncing it. That's somehow more rude. It's keen. Oh no, we're hitting our worst discover hits. All right, Screaming Phantom's not going to do anything because we have the 4-5. Really just the one Altasaur is kind of doing its job. It is just taking over the board. It's like the only card that matters on board out of all, all six of these creatures right now. It's just too chunky for them to attack into, and it's constantly dealing damage. Do I want to eat skint away any of their cards? Not particularly. And just play the Curator again, get third Brackish Blundered, maybe? Maybe not. Looks like it might stick around this time. And it does stick around. Here's a Mineshaft Spider. And a River Herald Guide. There's a Malamet Veteran to draw into, sure. I will not mill myself with my spider. Grasping Shadows, that is very annoying. I guess they still don't really have good attacks, right? Because I can just trade the spider into this, and then it's all ground creatures where I can trade, like, the River Herald Guide or something else. But that life gain does mean this game is going to be long. But we did figure as much when we built the deck. Built it for board stalls with cards like the Altasar. I figure there's going to be a lot of long games of magic. Unlucky drop the curator to force me to recast it again here. Sure. I'll recast it and then we'll get to get veteran and something else. Dynatomaton still just trades one for one into like Mycoid or something. 
So no attacks. There's the veteran. And a dinatomaton. All right, my quaid for River Herald Guide is fine. They're back to 20, though. Now Didact Echo, draw a card. They discover Ancestral Reminiscence, draw three, discard one, so they're going to have just as many cards in hand as us. Here's a ping. Put them down to 18. So Sahili's Lattice. Okay. I don't hate Eats Keen Tear, but I kind of want to just play another Panicked Altistar. They only get to lifelink one more attack. Right, we just let it in next turn and then just start pinging for four damage a turn. Feels like a plan. Also, actually, their uh, Dynatomaton blocks are just not good anymore. Kind of want to wait for uh, more stuff to die before I start attacking with the veteran, though. But yeah, they don't have good blocks for the Dynatomaton attacks, because they lose an Echo, which is an actual flyer now. It's still a one-for-one, one, but it's a better one-for-one one than it was earlier. And we actually want more permanents in our grave with this veteran, and potentially more veterans coming up. Alright, I'm just going to cast Altasar. Find another Dynatomaton. And are we out of spells yet? Nope. Walk with the Ancestors it is, which will pick up a Dynatomaton. Okay, we're out of mana value four or less spells. We have two Veterans and two Ceratops left for Discover five cards. Yeah, let's go. And this is what I was talking about, where we're going to have a clump of lands. And our whole deck has been shuffled at random now. So there's a bunch of lands in here that we can draw into. In the, uh, in the late game, as I was saying. Uh, with two walks with the Ancestors, we discard a, a permanent. So I'll discard the Primordial Gnar. I just have not, not had the time to crack the Promising Vein, because I've just recast Curator like <laughs> three turns in a row. I guess I cast it once. I recast it two turns in a row after that. Chupacabra Echo kills the Curator. All right. It's probably fine at this point since we only have four more cards to discover, really. And that does get the veteran active to put a counter wherever we want it. I get Ukbenbach, the great mistake. They are going to mill out before us, though, because they've cast so much just like card draw. Even though we've, like, double discovered a lot. It's crazy. I guess they cast some uh, some self-mill as well. That definitely helped. 12 life here. Ping away something with Eats Keenth. Dinosaur, shoot the... The open box, I guess. No great blocks for the Dinatomaton still. For the Veteran, if I put a counter on it, they don't have great blocks. And we gotta get some damage in here, try to actually close this game out. I guess I don't have to, but I'm in a solid position to speed the game up, so I should, I think. Get them closer to dead to Altasaurs. Alright. Yeah, these blocks are actually pretty good for our opponent. But math is for blockers. They did the math, though. Alright, they're down to eight. They're basically down to four. If they don't do a lifelink attack here, they're just dead.
If they don't go for a lifelink attack off of Grasping Shadows or uh, destroy one of our Panicked Altasaurs, then they're dead. Okay, so they are going to go for the Mycoid Life Gain attack. Fair enough. I think I just take it because I don't want to lose a Veteran or an Altasaur at all. They are out of stuff to discover. Their entire deck is lands now. So, yeah, I was going to say, this looks like an inevitable victory for us. I mean, we still have a bunch of action in our hand, a couple more beefy cards in the deck, and the pingers on board. So we do start things off 1-0. and The deck idea functions like a well-oiled machine, just a bunch of beef to discover into, the right lands to be able to cast them from our hand late in the game. Um if we run out of stuff, but we really didn't run out of stuff, so yeah, that just went really, really well. It was also some great luck for us. It was surprising our opponents uh, fought for that long. Like, we had a 5-4 trample on the board turn one, uh, but then they discovered the removal for it, and then we had the curator out, but then they bounced it, then we had the curator out, then they bounced it, then we had the curator out, then they bounced it, then yeah. Wild game. Wild game. This format is is silly. But I'm really happy to see that uh, all the, the little thoughts and interactions that went into the deck have played out really well. Um, especially like uh, the idea of there being a lot of board stall sort of situations where the panicked Altasaurs are going to play well, because they certainly did there. So we are 1-0 heading into game two. Here we are for game two on the play. With the Seismic Monstrosaur, I can draw my third mountain that I need to play Plundering Pirate, which will let me play the Curator. Alright, so turn one, I just hit a Ray of Ruin with nothing to kill, so I just draw a Ray of Ruin. Turn one, our opponent hits the Over the Edge with nothing to kill, so they just draw the Over the Edge. Perfectly balanced start to the game. Now let's Mountain Cycle. I guess I should do that during their turn. So it looks like I might be holding something up here. Let's go. Boom. 5-4 Trample on the board. We are ready to go. Let's see what they discover. That is not as big, but it is big enough to trade into the Veteran. But at least we trample over for a bit of damage. I think I will send it in here. No, they have a Tithing Blade on top. I'll definitely send it in then. Actually, no, because I can just sack the Plundering Pirate anyway if they cast Tithing Blade. Yeah. I think I'm still going to attack with it here, and the trade is just fine, because it's going to be a while before we have Descended. And then I'm going to have the Plundering Pirate be around, so if they try to Tithing Blade away the Curator, it'll be fine. Or a Panicked Altasaur. Now the Panicked Altasaur is fine. Somehow forgot I was about to just discover a big card anyway. I guess not a guaranteed big card, but with the way our deck is built, pretty likely to be something beefy. Ooh, Geological Appraiser. That's a fun one in this format. Just continue the Discover loop. They find a Kaslam Stone Tree to pull a cave out of their deck and ramp up. That was a pretty good chain for our opponent. I think Altasaur is honestly just as good as like discovering into Appraiser plus Stone Tree, just because of how good this is and the kind of board stalls that this format seems full of. But uh, that was very cool from our opponent. So here's Curator. And we just attack with Altasaur because it's four damage instead of two to tap it during our turn and attack. Walk with the Ancestors. Sure, I will cast that and discover again. Let's pick up... Six mana is kind of a lot. Let's pick up the Veteran, I think. Have another one of those to recast later. Oh, this is my Curator hit. I was going to say... Wait, am I about to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. So, okay... I just did Discover 5, Discover 5. Now I'm going to Discover 4, 4 times, I think? Because Curator? So one... Oh, no, it only triggers... It only triggers the first time each turn. Okay. So I'm just discovering four twice. I'm not discovering four four times. At least there's that. 
Still a pretty good turn, I think. Still a pretty good turn. I got really excited for a second, but then I remembered that uh, Wizards makes everything only happen once each turn now. All the double ups are only once each turn. All right, defossilize the axe draw. Oh, never mind. I was going to be like, no, Tithing Blade. And I'm like, that's right, I just discovered two more creatures. If I didn't discover these creatures and I had to sack my Altasaur or my Curator, that would have been very bad. But I did discover these creatures. And there's the concession from our opponent. I mean, yeah, this board state's dumb. Altasaur is great in a board stall, and Curator is completely busted in half in this format. Our hand is completely full of action. Our opponent is just over it, and we're going to be 2-0 and heading into game number three. How does this keep happening? I'm getting concerned now. I've been completely whitelisted. Giving me the curator every game. I will keep casting it as long as they keep giving it to me. No, the deep cavern bat! Oh, please. Don't do it. Stop. No. Don't do it. Well... They didn't hit the Curator, but they did stop me from playing the Curator early. Ooh, show me the two-mana removal. Or discover the removal. Or start taking a ton of damage. Alright, that's not the removal. You cannot block that Ceratops without three creatures. Still looks pretty great here. Oh god, they discovered Thousand Moon Smithy though? One of the biggest bombs in the format? actually even better in this emblem mode because we're going to be spitting out extra permanents every turn that is a nightmare yeah that gnome soldier has power toughness equals the number of creatures and artifacts they control and if they tap five of their permanents during their uh, pre-combat main phase well that's a decent hit uh because i do have the two mana up uh, if they Tap five of their permanents in their pre-combat main phase. They flip this into a land where every time they cast something, they get another one of those gnomes. Could have killed the deep cavern bat, but I think it's pretty important to kill the gigantic beefy creature. Because it's a 4-4 four, four right now. It's going to be a 5-5 five, five when they cast that, a 6-6 six, six when they discover something. It's just a uh, horrific. Ray of Ruin is also horrific. Goodbye, Ceratops. R.I.P. The fact that it exiles is the really rough part, because our walk with the ancestors aren't going to work. All that stuff. Very sad. Very sad about that. Now we just pass and see what we discover. Dinatomaton, not a bad one. They're at 4 out of 5 permanents for the smithy. There's a Screaming Phantom, so if they tap their entire board, they can flip the Smithy next turn. That would also be only if they don't lose any of these creatures. I was going to say, so I'm definitely going to attack in, but they just hit removal again, so goodbye, Dinothomaton. I guess we're not going to. I will send an Eats Kink, because I would like to reduce their, their permanent count by one. And it's only blocking the Sun Scribe anyway. No. Oh god, here we go. Here's a flipped Thousand Moon Smithy. And of course we discover the walk with the ancestors when they exiled two of our creatures. Um I think I still just cast this. I need to discover something. Cast it for zero. Okay, Ceratops and Spider. Okay. I actually do mill with Spider because I've got another walk with the Ancestors in hand. Yeah, now I've got two different permanents to choose. They're not great permanents, but they are in my graveyard. That's the important part. I mean, if they flip the Smithy, they are facing a lot of damage here, which was part of the hopes of hitting some beef this turn disincentivize them from flipping the Thousand Moon Smithy. They are going to do it. All right. 
Hopefully we outrace it here, just attack with the entire board. Does depend quite a bit on what they discover. If they discover a beefy creature removal spell, that will be bad. Especially removal spell. Removal spell would be the worst here. And they did scry something on top, so they know what they're going to discover, and they like it. Wait, no, they scryed a planes to the top? And now it's just on the bottom anyway. Okay. Um... Shoot, they hit the life gain thing, the grasping shadows. That's going to be real bad if they get golems out. So this skull taker cannot block well at all. So we just send in the entire team. Just send in everybody twice and hope that we'll find a kill. They're down to three, so they need to hold like everything up to not die next turn. They can only grasping shadows up like a 2-2 at this point. What am I exiling? Oh, I can exile the land? Bet. Get that out of here. No thanks. Yeah, I can exile target non-basic land. That's so grimy in the best way. Thank you, Ray of Ruin. Very cool. You're not supposed to hit a fourth Ray of Ruin over there. Ray of Ruin's on my team now. God. All right, well, that somewhat sucks. But, I mean, they're just dead, right? Because they have to block this with three things, and if they block that with three things, they're not blocking anything else with enough. Yeah, if, like, one damage gets in, they're dead. Yeah, so I just, like... Give my 2-3 menace, I guess. And uh, the blocks... The blocking math is really weird, but there's just no way they survive, right? Because it's like three creatures have to block there. Two have to block there. This has trample, so like two have to block that. They just don't have enough creatures to block all this, all this, and all this. So then like this sneaks by. Or just anything sneaking by for one damage gets there because we do the Altus or ping, so... All right. That is now three and oh, heading into game number four. Here we are now for game number four, and this is the first game we might not start with turn four Curator of Sun's Grace. So we'll see. Our opponent starts with a Discover into Plundering Pirate, solid one. It's also our first game not on the play, and I have said multiple times being on the play is a massive advantage in this format, so we had that going for us a lot. So, see how much that impacts us here. See what it's like on the other end of things. I'm sure it's not enjoyable. Dowsing device. Ooh, that's going to be a block. That's scary. Another plundering pirate. Okay, definitely want to slap something on the board to block that. Might just cash in the treasure uh, so I can drop a River Herald Guide this turn. Eh, I'll probably discover a blocker here. Let's actually go Healy's Lattice. I don't actually want to ditch the Altasaur, though, so I don't have anything I want to discard to the Lattice. You know what? Yeah, screw it. I'm going to River Herald Guide. Find Dynatomaton as the Discover. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a perfectly fine Discover. I want to get greedy and look for one of my five drops, like an Altasar or a Veteran, uh, or maybe even the Curator, but I think Dynatomaton is still probably... I don't know, maybe it's like the average Discover for this deck. It feels like it's right on the edge towards the, uh, the upper half of good Discoveries, so I will keep it. There's the Panicked Altasar from our opponent, so they definitely know what's up. Yeah, Panicked Altasar and Sunshot Militia, they have the tools to demolish us in a board stall, and it's just immediately a board stall, so this is not looking great. Discover a, or discard a veteran here to draw. 
So I'm definitely casting the Altasaur. Another Dynatomaton. Still wild. This is turn four. This is our turn three. The emblems go crazy. Bitter Triumph. Kill one of the Dinatomatons, I guess. A little better than a 4-2 Vigilance. And that was the Discovery. There's a Seismic Monster Sword, which is a great card with Sahili's Lattice. I think I'm just going to Mountain Cycle this, because we need to hit the fifth land pretty badly, and that gets it in the graveyard to craft with the Sahili's Lattice. So let's see what we discover. Yep, Baltasar is going to start doing its thing. Find Eats Keeps. Four damage to something. Uh, I could hold it in my hand so I can actually kill their Altasaur, but it's going to take a while before I do kill their Altasaur anyway. So is it better to just get more immediate impact on the board and kill the Militia? I think it might be, because it's also mana efficient this way. Like, I'm not going to play Eats Keen until turn six. If I put it in my hand. Because I'm going to have to play the Ceratops and then use the Ceratops to kill the Altasaur. They playing combat tricks? Maybe they didn't get the memo. Oh no, it's a removal spell? That's gross. The double bitter triumph. Yeah, that's a good counter spell to the removal. Well, if it's any consolation, they probably would have still had that. If I had tried to eat Skeenth later with a bigger dino. At least this way we're more likely to be able to keep our rampaging ceratops around. Or our own panicked altasaur. Alright, discover into the Echo of Dusk. Probably one of the smallest spells in their deck. A little two drop there. I mean... Life total-wise, we're in a decent spot to play a Trampler or a Super Menace card instead of an Altasaur. I'm gonna go for the big Trampler here. They gotta run out of removal eventually. And then we just beef on in. Hey, there we go. See, cast the Veteran and discover the Altasaur. And if I cast the Altasaur, we would have discovered the Veteran. So we were good. We were good either way. We had it all lined up. Another Echo of Dusk. All right, more two drops. We are very happy to see that. More Ceratops? Sure. Honestly, just sure. Um, this seems fine. Yeah, that's cool with me. Clear out a bunch of the board. Trample over for a point. Slightly ahead here, life total wise. And just start dropping some real hard to block creatures now that their board state is pretty small in terms of the number of creatures they have. Yes, all the beef. Another Malamet veteran here. I gotta look at our deck list again after this event. Because I just keep forgetting how many five mana things we managed to get this draft. It's kind of crazy. Discover a two drop. Not the bestest. Get the alt sword ping, they're down to 11.
Word State's getting wide enough now. I think I'll play another Altasaur instead of the Ceratops. Just trade this off, get a point of trample damage in or whatever. Ooh, I guess we don't get trample damage in this way. Smart block from our opponent. And the discovery is... Walk with the Ancestors, which I will cast. Pick up... A Veteran, a Ceratops. I'm not going to have the mana to play all these anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Let's just take a Ceratops, I guess. And there's the Curator. If that sticks around, that'll be pretty nasty, even though we're pretty low on cards left to discover. Here comes their discovery, which is Visage of Dread. All right, I don't think that really impacts this at all, because the best card for them to get is the Ceratops, and I have two of it, so that's not going to do anything here. It can flip into a 5-4, but that requires six mana. There's the concession from our opponent. They see our hand, they're like, you still got all that? Yep. My deck is just all five mana stuff, so I can only play one a turn. So they just kind of sit there waiting in hand, waiting for their turn to get cast onto the board. All right, that is four and O oh now as we head into game number five. Here we are against Newmont. We're on the play here, hoping to hit a mountain to get to Curator. I'm just going to go for it. We've got the random discovers to help us out. And any... Uh, any lands are great draws. Wandering Pirates is sick one. All right, Numat starts with a swamp. Triumphant Chomp is the hit to kill our Plundering Pirate. There's the land we need to play Curator next turn, so I'm gonna hold off. So I have the treasure token to do that, and here's Malamet Veteran. Five, four, Trample, turn two. It's an Echo of Dusk for just a 2-2. Two, two. Sunshot Militia. Yeah, it looks like Numod is just playing a normal draft deck for the most part, and hopefully that means we just get to body Numod with a stack of 5 drops here off of Curator. Oh yeah, Panicked Altasaur. And another Discover. This Eats Keenth, that's going to go to hand. Numod hits, so join the dead for the Curator. But we are already in a fantastic spot right now. Here's River Herald Guide. Find a walk with the Ancestors. Yeah, I'll discover that. Send these in. Numod's down to six. Discover the walk. Pick up the Curator. Discover something else. Which is a Dynatomaton. And there's the concession from Numon. <laughs> Numon is fully over it. We're on three forests and our deck is just still operating at full efficiency. I think even without the Curator, that was just going to be incredible for us. So busted, busted start, obviously. But yeah, really shows off how good just playing a stack of five drops is, I guess. We are 5-0 now, heading into game six. Here we are for game number six now. Super keepable hand mana-wise. Get to our random black splashes. Turn one from our opponent. They are going to discover Echo of Dusk. They are uh, on the play here, so they do get that first discover. Our first discover is the Curator. No Tithing Blade. One turn, baby, please. All right, Skullcap Snail is perfectly fine. It's not a Tithing Blade. 
and Curator's gonna go to town. I guess unless they discover the Tithing Blade. Yep, all right. It's the Ray of Ruin. Good RNG from opponent there. But it looks like they've got a lot of two drops in their deck, so just the way our deck is built can uh, naturally come ahead in a long game. Yeah, nothing in Grave, but we still, I think, discover into that pirate, get a treasure here. Make sure we don't miss, or get the River Herald Guide. Forgot about that one. It's another option. Hit a Mineshaft Spider. I do not want to draw into that. Because uh, my turn four play is going to be Eats Keenth, hopefully. If we can hit a Dino off the Discover on turn three. Um, I do think... Actually, I should just Mountain Cycle this. Six drop. Fills the Grave for the Veteran. Guarantees the fifth land. Which is pretty good. That's a lot of two mana cards from our opponent, so I think our, our deck makeup's going to be very advantageous in the long run. Uh, just trading the Marionette. I don't love that. We'll just pass. Find Sahili's Lattice. Discard a land, draw two seems fine. Definitely better than not casting it. Because uh, we already have the six power dinosaur engraved to craft this turn five. Honestly, I think if I just buy time and trade this into the 2-2, I think that's fine. It fills the grave for the veteran. I actually naturally do the swamp, so I could leave the promising vein here, but... I'll get the second green source at this point, I guess. Ooh, defossilize. Defossilize an Echo of Dusk, I guess. Probably better than putting in their hand, because they only have two mana, or three mana out right now. Oh, whoa, it... Oh, yeah, it explores twice, and they hit two... Oh, they hit a non-land, so they get two counters on it. Dang, that makes Eats Keen th not kill the four for... I'm still going to kill Marionette, though. I can deal with a 5-5 five, five Life Linker. Like, I can attack into that. I can't attack into a 1-1 Death Toucher as well. Alright, 5-5 five, five Life Linker. Snap double block if they go in here. I also have the Ray of Ruin. I don't know why I'm not mentioning that. That's another way to deal with the uh, Life Linker. All right, having the Eats Keith and Grave is actually kind of good because uh, we've got two more of our Graveyard Recursion spell that would let us recast it later for more removal. It's like our only interaction, really, outside of this one Ray of Ruin. Could Ray the Echo. Then I get to Scry, see what we might discover here. I could also just make a Giant Dino, which is tempting. Or just play the veteran. You know what? I'll just play the veteran. And discover a panicked Altasaur. Red green might just be the best color pair to be, really. It feels like Panicked Altasaur at common and Malamet Veteran at common is pretty great, especially when the bots don't take them very highly. Especially like the Veteran, I think, just generally not a very high uh, high pick for just regular human drafts of the format, so the bots probably weren't trained to pick Malamet Veteran super high. Yeah, that's fine. Still one-for-one one trades there, even if it's a one-for-one one trade and removal instead. Squirming Emergence, that's very cute. That grave's pretty full. Five. So they can reanimate basically anything they want. But they don't have anything big to reanimate, so... Tithing Blade. Oh, I forgot that could hit non-creatures. That's actually rough. They get to reanimate Tithing Blade there. Okay, I don't want them to life gain basically at all here. I'm just going to Ray of Ruin at this point. Find Walk with the Ancestors. Yeah, pick up Eatskeenth. 
get a plundering pirate. I think that's a fine discover for the turn. Also, I could just pick up the Altasaur. But I think I want more removal, because that's the one thing that I'm just not going to get. And thanks to the treasure token from the Plundering Pirate, I could play the Altasaur and play and crack the Eats King. No, I'm at 8 mana. I'd need 9 mana to do both. But it looks like I don't need to play Eats King here. Just facing a 4-2. Alright, great value plays from our opponent. They're going to mill 2 and pick up 2 of those cards from their grave to their hand. 2 creature cards, that is. Skullcap Snail and the Cave Dweller thing. Stinging Cave Crawler. Ooh, Hoverstone Pilgrim, so I don't mill out. Not going to worry about that. Well, never mind. We've only got 13 cards left already. Maybe I should start worrying a little bit. Well, I can only cast a, one spell here, so let's just play Spookiest, Scariest Threat. And discover another spooky, scary threat. Yep. Malamet Veteran. Spooky, scary threat, he says. Meow, says Arena. It's the cutest little meow for the beefiest of cats. Goodbye, Donatomaton. Alright, so we're going to eat Keith the Cave Crawler and just bash in. Aww, they hit their own veteran. So, our veteran... Probably... Is going to get consumed by theirs. Um... I guess I'd rather kill the veteran than the cave crawler, and they can use the cave crawler to kill my veteran if they want, I guess. Like, either way, our veteran's gonna trade off here. They could triple block Ceratops, also. Yeah, one of our creatures is gonna die here no matter what, so let's... Let's kill that one, and then uh, send these in. I could send an Eat Skeens because I have the Walk with the Ancestors in my hand, uh, but I could also just block with it to do that. So let's just send in. One, two, three, four, five, six toughness. I'm going to put a counter on Ceratops. So they can't uh, triple block it and keep something. Okay, triple block it, lose the board. Cool with me. And we discover Dynatomaton. They got a board wipe over here. No, Sentinel of the Nameless City. Pretty sweet rare, generally. And an Akawali for a 7-7. Seven, seven, big blocker. And a Mineshaft Spider. More blockers. Okay. We're down to 10 cards. We are milling out before them. So that is something. 7-7 seven, seven blocker. Does this have Trample? No. Yeah, I've got the Pilgrim to make sure I don't mill out. How many spells do I have left in my deck? Four? I still got enough spells to go for the Walk with the Ancestors this turn. If I pick up a four drop, I can cast it. I don't have any four drops I want to cast. Mm. I think I'm still going to do this. I'm going to pick up the Ceratops again, just for the future. And we get a Dynatomaton right now. Give Menace there, so they have to block with Akawali and somebody else, I guess. It's supposed to be Menace there. 
Is this maximum damage? Block and then they double block one of these? I have no idea what I'm doing here. I've got one blocker up for 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I definitely live through the crack back, and I'm hitting pretty, pretty significantly hard here. And I'm going to have another blocker up because of the emblem, so I have two blockers up. The only cards left in my deck, I think, are creatures now. Yeah, so they go to one, and we do hit Primordial Nar. As long as they don't play the card that gives one of their attackers lifelink every turn, I think we're fine. If they play that... Oh... <laughs> I was going to say, if, uh, if they play that, they go to a million attacking with Aquawali, and I have to block? Can't be blocked by more than one creature. Okay, I don't have to block, so I can still crack back with everybody. I can't double block and kill the Aquawali. God, that's such a good combo. Oh, they're down to just lands now, though. All they have left is lands. They have two blockers here. Block, block, take eight. Yeah, they're dead on board. They're not on board. We just send in. They block the two non-menace creatures and take eight. Okay, that was scary. I named the one card that I thought might be a pretty good out for them, and then they cast it. Luckily, the math is just right for us to have lethal in the crack back. If they had, like, one more life there, and we couldn't lethal them that turn, then the list of things they could have in their hand is, is kind of scary. Luckily, we know the deck is just lands at that point, so it's definitely that's definitely helpful that we know they're not going to top deck something to kill us. Anyways, ooh, close one there. Close one for sure, but the undefeated streak remains. We are now 6-0, and oh, heading into the final boss with this lovely pile of 5-mana beef. Here we are now for the final boss with multiple rounds in the chamber. Kind of want to take a mulligan on this one because I don't like having two of my Altasaurs in the opener so that I can't just discover into them, but I'm still just going to keep, I think, just like any opening hand with this deck in this format of discover nonsense. And the Sahili's Lattice is really helpful for drawing the lands to get to the five drops. All right, Hoverstone Pilgrim, probably our latest gameplay, really just to make sure we don't mill out. We've had several games where each player was down to like five-ish cards in deck, so I don't think it's unreasonable to have a, a Pilgrim in here. It's also just like a big card to hit off Discover, even if it's more defensive than offensive, so. Card is fine, but not the craziest hit we can get. Our opponent hits an Ancestor's Age, so they are Definitely not building around the emblem a ton. If they are playing combat tricks in their decks, they might just be going full aggro there. Disregarding emblem. Playing creatures and attacking. There's another 5 drop, Primordial Nar, turn 2. And very worth mentioning that we're on the play here, so we have that massive advantage of being the first one to have discovered... Our opponent discovers another Ancestor's Aid, though, and they are just getting just massively punished for running combat tricks. Slam in. They can trade the Scallywag into the Gnar, but it discovers when it dies. And we get our, uh, our Plundering Pirate or our Eatskeenth here. And they're down to 16. It is going to be the Eatskeenth. That would be my least favorite to hit. But we will have four mana for it next turn. Um, if we can get a Dino on board. It's not a Dino. Let's let me put the Alt Sword back in hand and maybe find the Curator. Nah, Plundering Pirate. Well, Plundering Pirate's still fine. Fine. 
Ooh, I didn't realize I was going to have to discard the hand size. That's a little bit awkward. Guess I'll ditch, uh... <laughs> ditch the Altasaur I just picked up. No, I'll ditch the Dinatomaton. Next turn, I'm going to have four lands naturally to play Itzkint and kick it if I want, although I don't have any big dinos. That'd be only if they play some with two or less toughness that I want to kill. Um, but I could also use my four lands in the treasure to play a five drop, and then hopefully we just find a, a fifth land and just start playing a five drop every turn instead of a four drop. All right, so they discover Shipwreck Sentry, a two drop. So yeah, they're just like blue-red artifacts aggro. Blue-red pirate aggro with a really low curve, so they're not getting nearly as big of a benefit out of this emblem as we are. If this emblem didn't exist, our deck would suck. It is entirely built around the fact that we know we get this emblem. We would get really, really steamrolled by quick aggro decks if we couldn't know that we're just plopping down a a 4-5 or a 5-4 at some point in the first three turns pretty consistently as a giant blocker. Curator, probably the best draw in our deck in basically any position. So we just slam that onto the board pre-combat. They are going to trade their Ancestor's Aid into our Plundering Pirate. And we are going to discover five twice, finding a Mineshaft Spider. The Veteran's are already active, so I'm not going to mill myself. Uh, and a Dinatomaton. Solid hits. And there's the concession for our opponent. That is going to do it. That is 7 and 0. Oh. Very, very happy with how this deck played out. All of the little things that we were thinking about with the emblem did pan out quite well. You want to have a good chunk of beefy spells, making that emblem as consistently impactful as possible. And it's fine to have a really high mana curve like this, because not only is that emblem going to be slamming down all these five drops, but it's going to be ripping non-lands out of your deck. So even with like 16 lands with this many five drops... For the multiple reasons that I listed, one being that we have a mountain cycler, but also just the emblem reasons of knowing that, like, even if I get stuck on mana and I have some five drops stuck in my hand, I'm still going to be doing things. The emblem's going to be spitting out some five drops. Um, like, that really helps. So that even when you are mana screwed, like, you're still doing things actively. And later in the game, as we saw off of some of the discovers, we end up with a super land heavy deck. So we're just guaranteed. To, to start hitting those land drops to slam down all the five drops in your hand later. So I liked the lower land count. I liked the just mountain of five mana spells. I liked everything about the deck. It's hard not to like a nice seven win undefeated run. There were definitely some really lucky things going for this deck. One of them is that we were on the play quite a bit. Um, the other is that we managed to get a Curator of Sun's Creation in our draft pod, probably the most busted card in this emblem format but i am very happy with the deck idea in general as well it's a simple one a stack of five drops but it's a powerful one in this uh in this format so we are going to grab our maximum prize out our 950 gems and two packs but that is going to end today's video as always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for supporting the channel, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in seeing more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.